In this video, we'll be covering 5 mistakes that players in every rank make and how to fix them. What's going on Pro Guides fam? It's your resident Radiant Royal G. Hope your rank games are going well. Lately, I've been noticing that there's a few mistakes that people tend to make across all different ranks but aren't really aware of or don't know how to fix. So that's why today I wanted to cover 5 of these mistakes and give my insights on why they show up, how they might affect you, and how to fix them. Some might apply to you very often, while others might only show up every once in a while. So, it's always a good idea to come visit ProGuys.com and book an Immortal or Radiant Coach if you want more personalized advice. With that being said, let's jump right into it. The first mistake I'll be covering today stems from a common problem all players run into, which is just missing shots. Usually when someone loses a duel or misses a shot, their first reaction is, aw oh man, I whiffed. But in a lot of cases, it might have been another reason instead. Aim is obviously one of the core skills in Valorant and has a ton of impact on performance and improvement. But when players miss a shot or lose a duel, many fail to start thinking about how they took the fight or how they could have played the situation better. Aim is extremely important no doubt, and sometimes a misplay can be chalked up to a whiff, but more often than not, there's way more factors to a duel or situation. Good aim is a huge factor for a good player, and building up good aim should always be a player's goal when improving. But if you focus too heavily on the idea of aim being the reason you lose fights or aren't performing, then you could be tunneling on only a small part of a much bigger issue. Just know that if you're not hitting shots, it might not actually be your aim, but the positions you're putting yourself in. With better positioning or maybe better timing, the fight might have been completely different or much easier for you. And before we head into the next mistake, let's have our question of the day. What's one mistake that you constantly see players make? This won't be on the list, but one of my pet peeves when coaching players is seeing how they waste their freeze time. Too many players don't check economy or figure out their game plan in the freeze time and end up being lost when the round starts. It irritates me to no end because in some cases, just a better starting position could have made all the difference in a round. Let me know what mistake you constantly see in the comments. The second common mistake on our list is related to clearing angles, which is an essential skill required for any player worth their rank. But how this mistake shows up isn't actually because a player is bad at clearing angles, but instead they're actually too comfortable with it. And that's autopilot clearing. Because crosshair placement and clearing angles is something that's so basic to a player's skill set, people often start being able to clear angles naturally without even putting in too much effort. But in the process of doing so, pretty much every player has had times where because they're so used to it, they do so without actually thinking about taking a fight. And the result of that is you going through the motions of clearing an angle, and then suddenly realizing there's an enemy there. And by the time you double take and actually focus up to fight him, you're already dead. Clearing angles at the end of the day is actually a lot about focus, because even if you're staring at the enemy, if you aren't focused and ready to shoot, you won't mentally draw that connection to click mouse 1. And in reality, the way for you to fix that is pretty simple, although hard to implement. All you have to do is become aware of the possibility of autopiloting and treat each angle you clear as a potential gunfight incoming. That way you stay focused while clearing angles and that can save you from an embarrassing misplay. This next mistake is something that is all too common amongst all ranks because we're in a ranked environment and people tend to play with less discipline. But I think as soon as I mention it, you guys will immediately remember situations where this has happened. The problem I'm thinking about is rushing rotations. Of course, this doesn't apply to the same to each player because everyone has different positions on the map. But at the same time, every player is at risk of creating an opening for the enemy by rushing rotations regardless of position. So instead of fixing this case by case, it's often better to think about a few rules and understandings that can help you minimize this problem. First of all, if you're, for example, on C on Haven and your teammates run into enemies at A long or short, you have to realize that if the enemy actually decides to rush site and take it, you wouldn't be able to get there in time anyways to defend the rush. So even if you were to instantly rotate, you don't actually get any benefits. Instead, you just open yourself up for a C lurk or a potential garage lurk. This applies to most maps though, because sites are designed to be sufficiently far away from each other so that rotations can't be super easy. If there's actually a high risk of a rush, what should happen instead is that your team rotates one or two positions closer to that site depending on the threat. So for example, A player contacts enemies and is afraid of a site take. The reaction should maybe be something like, the A link player rotates back to A, B player rotates to A link, garage player rotates to B link or B, and C player either commits on C to catch a lurk or to move to garage and play for retake. That way, your team rotates in a more structured and efficient way that doesn't open up unexpected gaps that can get abused by a lurker. 
And I just wanted to say that if you want to see how this plays out at a higher rank, or want to see how a player can abuse openings on the map, I'm a sentinel main who specializes in finding lurks. I stream my games every weekday and also do live coaching if you're interested or on the fence about booking a coach. Right now, I'm doing a classic only to immortal challenge, so you can also see some practical tips to climb in your ranks. With that being said, let's head into number 4. Our next mistake is not quite a mistake, but a result of indecisiveness which can completely change how you approach and improve at Valorant, hesitation. Hesitation is one of the most common issues players can run into that can also be one of the most damaging. And part of why it's so damaging is also because it's so hard to become aware of its effects on your gameplay actually. So let me explain. People hesitate typically for a few reasons. They could be feeling nervous because the game is close or it's the rank up game, the other team might be really good and they're afraid of them, or they might not know whether the play they're making is the right play or not. And because they hesitate, they might spend more time thinking, or they might panic or misplay if they weren't ready to commit. You lose focus, timing, and maybe even end up not making a play at all. But that's not all. Because you hesitated, which makes you lose focus or miss the timing, the hesitation could change the outcome of your plays drastically. Which means that even if you had the right play, if you hesitated and it went badly, you might even think the play was a mistake. And in truth, you can't even judge the play for what it is anymore because the hesitation changed the outcome. I'm sure some of you guys can realize just how bad that is. If every play you make has hesitation or second thoughts and you didn't even know about it, you'll end up coming to the wrong conclusions and maybe view some great plays normally as bad plays simply because the hesitation ruined the results. And if you ended up shying away from making some plays because of hesitation, you'll never know if that play was good or not either. Cutting out hesitation means that you can approach the game and actually improve. One piece of advice that a pro player gave me in the past was that when he approached ranked or scrims, he would always listen to his gut. The reason he said was that if he hesitated and didn't follow his intuition in lower stake games like ranked or scrims, then he would naturally also hesitate and second guess himself in higher stake matches like tournaments and officials. Don't take it from me, take it from the pros. So if you want to improve quickly and with less drawbacks, do your absolute best to remove hesitation from your gameplay. For our final mistake, we have a topic that most players in the community believe they have the answer to, which is a whole conversation surrounding playing for wins versus kills. And some of you guys might be thinking already, isn't the mistake obviously focusing on kills? Of course you want to play for the win, to which I would say the good old, yes, but no. You see, the topic is actually a lot more complicated than most people think. On one side, we have the easy target which is playing for kills, something a lot of duelists tend to do. And if you were to ask anyone why playing for kills is bad, they would immediately say, because kills don't mean wins, or playing for kills might make you overheat and lose your team the round, or a bunch of other reasons. But if you were to ask someone why playing for the win is bad, you'd probably be met with confused looks and people saying, playing for the win is always good, what do you mean? Well, I'm here to tell you from experience as a Radiant player and coach that both have their flaws and benefits as well. Let's start with players who play for the win, which are usually Sentinel and Controller players. While it's good to focus on objectives and plays that can give you a better chance of winning the round, there's a big issue that playing for the win runs into, which is, what fights are worth taking and not worth taking? After all, it's impossible to win unless you kill your opponents, but at the same time, you want to make sure you're giving your team the best chance of winning. For players who run into this line of thinking, hesitation becomes a common result, because you're trying to think so much about how to win that you end up playing too passively or start to avoid taking 1v1 duels and instead try to only outplay your opponents. And this problem isn't isolated to itself. Outplaying someone is significantly harder than winning a gunfight. That means in order to outplay someone, you have to go through extra steps, extra considerations, and in each of these steps, there's a chance of making a mistake. The more complicated the play, the more likely it is to run into errors unless you're a pro who's practiced it many times in the server. For players trying to improve, you're closing off a whole side of the game that is much simpler and sometimes even more effective than trying to focus on the win which are situations where taking the aim duel is actually the best play. And what's more, players who focus only on the win tend to focus so intently on playing smart that their mechanics become weaker and they spend less time training their aim, which then lead to bad performances when playing against more aggressive players that are willing to take the duels. At the end of the day, you still need kills to win a game. No matter how good you are at playing for the win conditions, going 5 and 20 is just not a good look for your chances of winning. Now onto the more obvious mistake, which is to focus on kills, something duelists and aggressive initiators tend to do. We all know that focusing on kills has a lot of issues like overheating, baiting teammates, and generally being a bad teammate. But one thing that focusing on kills gets right, which ironically is why duelist players tend to improve the fastest, is the fact that chasing kills gives you a lot more practical experience. 
First of all, there's much less hesitation because typically a 1v1 is considered a good thing, which means the bar is set much lower for a play to be considered good or worth doing. Meanwhile, players who focus on kills tend to focus more on mechanics because that lets them win more duels, which directly leads them to improve at a faster rate. Lastly, players tend to enter more gunfights in a match, and that also means they have more chances to make an impact on the game, whether it's good or bad. A hard-carrying duelist can be a bottom frag griefer from game to game, and that makes it much easier to recognize when you're playing badly versus playing well. All of these reasons may seem shallow and bad to follow, but if I'm being honest, they're much more useful for someone trying to rank up and improve. And because kills are still needed to win a game, even if you don't exactly know why getting a certain kill will help you win the game, getting that kill could still have a very big impact on how the round turns out. So the truth is, both focusing on kills and the win are mistakes that players tend to make. It's actually more like a spectrum. Kills are a more practical way to achieve the victory, while winning is the end goal that guides players more intentionally. Neither is completely in the right or the wrong, and trying to argue for only one is to be ignorant to the nature of the game. Which is why if you're a firm believer of either side, the first step to fixing this is to become more open-minded about the benefits and costs of both approaches and find the perfect middle ground. And with that said, that's our list of 5 mistakes that players in all ranks tend to make. Let me know if this helped, and consider liking and subscribing if you enjoy this type of content. It's been Royal G, and good luck on the grind.